Well, kids have got to learn things like shopping, doing chores. I'm talking about elementary school kids. When I was in elementary school, I got an allowance every week in the 50s, um, 50 cents could buy a lot. I just saw an ad the other day for a child's debit card and a teenager was um, trying to figure out if he had enough money on to buy earbuds and learning the concept of saving. I was buying much cheaper things than that. Um, and I'm realizing just how important that was. And table manners, saying please and thank you. We'd sit at the dining room table and if I stuck my finger in the mashed potatoes, my mother would say, use the fork. She'd give the instruction. This was just the way it was taught in the 50s. You gave the instruction uh, instead of just yelling no at them. Uh, but it's very important to teach kids these very, very basic skills. I'm and seeing you know, I would make a point, Temple, I would make a point that if there's anybody listening who thinks, well, that's kind of, you know, a little old fashioned. The point is you're not just teaching that particular skill. You're teaching things like the ability to take instruction, the ability to think about other people, the ability to take turns, all well, of those the turn things. taking was a very big part of my therapy. We did a lot of turn taking with board games and we played board games and card games and that taught turn taking. And I think this is one of the reasons why some of the grandfathers uh, uh, have had good careers and they find out they're autistic when the kids get diagnosed, they had paper routes at age 11. You see, social skills have to be taught in a much more systematic manner. It, it, it doesn't come naturally. Right. And, and we teach them by giving specifics, not general ideas, but- No, no, specific. general doesn't work. You're gonna say, if I stick my hand in the mashed potatoes, and say I use the fork. I can remember chewing with my mouth open. Mother would say, you know, cut your, close your mouth. Um, and because other people think it's disgusting, she would give the reason for right. chewing my mouth closed. She would give the reason and then she would give the alternative behavior. That's right. That's right. And sometimes we forget to do that because we're just frustrated by a child and we just tell them to stop, but that's not teaching them anything. But you see, that doesn't teach them what they should do. Right. See, that's a really important thing. And this right. was all done very calmly. There wasn't any yelling or screaming. Okay, we're at the dining room table and I reached across for the serving dish. Mother would just say, ask your sister to pass it. It was done just like that. You know, and these are, these are very simple things. They're not necessarily something that would be in an IEP or, or in a child's therapy, but they are the building blocks of real life. You're going to need these things, whether, no matter what your, you know, verbal abilities are, no matter what your intellectual abilities are, you, you need some basic sense of responsibility for your own behavior. And I think too often we let the years go by and then try to play catch up. And there's too well, many. Tell you, this is where I still have a problem with interrupting. I can't get the timing right. That's it's okay. The process of speed is too slow. And this tail manner stuff, you're talking, you know, like seven. You know, this was really emphasized. I mean, you know, I was a young kid and that was done with all the children in the neighborhood. Right. Right. It's a lot easier to teach a young child than to go back and try to break bad habits that have developed over the years. And if you wait, for instance, in an IEP, if you wait until senior year to start preparing a child for the real world and starting transition, that's a tough task. These things have to be built on top of each other. So we've got some charts in the book where we talk about from early age, toddler, elementary school, junior high, high school, young adulthood, and how to build on top of each other. And I think you were, you were really fortunate, Temple, that your mom kind of just inherently had that wisdom to do that. Well, that, it was also kind of the standard thing that was done in the neighborhood when I was a child. The other thing where mother really had the wisdom was developing my ability in art. 
and really encouraging creativity. She's a very creative person herself, and she always encouraged uh, doing lots of different kinds of art. You know, and then a kid in another family, hopefully good at music or math, and then the parents and the teachers need to be encouraging that. See, that's developing the strength. Right, and exposing, 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 exposing. Yeah. Because a kid can't be expected to do that on their own. And that doesn't take a lot of, uh, you know, formal programming or, or money necessarily. You've, I'm sure you've got some great examples of how kids have learned real world skills that didn't cost anything. Well, we got kids growing up today that um, don't use tools. I taught a girl in my class who had never used a ruler to measure anything. Mm. Um, how's a kid gonna find out what he likes or hates tools if they're not exposed to them? These are all things that we were all exposed to doing all kinds of things. Mm. I loved art and woodworking and sewing in elementary school. Hated cooking, but I liked the other, um, uh, the other things. And, and doing artwork that became the basis of, you know, design work later yeah. on in life. Yeah. And I've heard you talk about some kids go down to the like local um, car mechanic and start to learn about tools and start to see if they're interested in cars. And that could be a great avenue for the future. Well, kids just aren't, you know, doing a lot of these things today. We got kids totally removed from the world of practical things. Yeah. And safety skills too, I should mention. Well, that was drilled into me. Drilled into me about looking both ways before you cross the street. Drilled into me from very, very young age, probably starting about age five. And money skills? Those money are... skills, that was probably um, seven. You know, it was young. I can remember when I was 10, my sister and I would say for a month, uh, of allowance so we could go spend it at the county fair on games. You see, but I'm realizing now the important skills that that taught. Right, right. You had no idea at the time, of course. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, those are the kinds of things that we talk about in this mindset. So to summarize, what we're saying is that it's never too early. Expose your kids, let them take baby steps. The real world's coming get them prepared for it. Well, that's what we got to do. And there's a tendency to overprotect. I'm seeing too many 16 year olds and teenagers that have never gone shopping. This is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we'll talk some more about some other mindsets another time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Temple. <laughs>